We've optimized the performance of large table views for faster loading of the data rows you're interested in seeing. You can filter the content of your table based on the map extent, and use highlighting within the selection set to draw attention to critical features of interest. If you find it difficult to navigate in 3D, we've added an on-screen control for panning, zooming in, and moving the camera up and down. ArcGIS Pro now permits the loading and publishing of 3D object layers and large LiDAR point cloud data sets. Here we have over a million building features for New York City and some dense point cloud data from Hurricane Sandy. These can now be published as scene layer packages, or SLPKs, that can be consumed locally by Pro. Once generated, the SLPKs can be shared using the Share Package tool, which uploads the package to Enterprise or ArcGIS Online for publishing. Once published, these layers are available in your portal and can be assembled into web scenes. We now have a simplified symbol layer drawing experience. Opening up the symbol layer drawing page, we can see that the views are separated into basic and advanced mode. When symbol layer drawing is enabled, we can see that the map updates with proper joining that has been set by default. We have familiar options for join, join and merge, and with helpful previews. In advanced mode, we have more fine grade sorting for groups of symbol layers. The Pro SDK brings an extensive set of API enhancements including new classes and methods to support your work in the areas of raster, geodatabase, mapping, geometry, content management, and editing. There are also updates to the Pro SDK's styles, brushes, and colors. Pro SDK now provides support for Visual Studio 2017 with continued SDK installation directly from the Visual Studio Marketplace. Tasks now have the ability to control standalone tables. For each step, you can set the table's editability and whether it is selected in the contents pane. Additionally, we have added the locate pane to the list of commands that can be embedded. With this comes the ability to control specific locate providers and preset a search string that will appear for the users. Finally, as requested, we've added a back button to the task pane. With a click of this button, you will immediately jump back to the previous step. The Export to CAD tool now supports the creation of CAD 3D mesh entities. To convert a multi-patch feature class to a CAD file, select the input, then accept defaults for the other parameters, and add a C file which controls the symbology of the output. The tool quickly creates all the feature classes we expect to see for a CAD file. You can see that we can directly read the CAD multi-patch layer in ArcGIS Pro. If we switch to AutoCAD, you can see that we have not only created a great looking drawing, but it is also an actual mesh entity. In Page Layout, we've added support for measured grids. A measured grid is used to display the coordinates from a projected coordinate system on your map frame. In this example, we're using the British National Grid. We provide the same new option that we released with Graticules to automatically adjust the grid interval so the interval makes sense as you zoom in and out. A grid can be composed of grid lines, ticks, and labels. And we now support a variety of complex grid label formats. New at ArcGIS Pro 2.0 is arcpy.da.describe. Instead of reading the documentation to find out which properties are valid for your data, arcpy.da.describe gives you all the valid properties in a nested dictionary format. Let's look at all the feature class properties this GDB layer supports. The Package Manager Conda has also been updated, which can now install packages from the R statistical language. Many geoprocessing tools have been enhanced so you can interactively draw new input features on the map. For example, you can draw points, lines, or polygons and buffer them to a specified distance. New analysis tools from ArcGIS Enterprise were added at the last release, which allow you to use portal layers as inputs and create new output layers in My Contents. These tools include the standard feature analysis tools, geoanalytics, and raster analysis tools. Ready to use tools allow you to perform sophisticated analysis faster than ever. To just provide some inputs, and the tools use Esri curated elevation services and street networks to do powerful analyses. 
You can now share your custom analysis with your organization as a web tool. Web tools take everything needed to do an analysis, including scripts, models, data, and tool settings, and upload it to an ArcGIS server where the web tool runs. ArcGIS Pro now allows SVG to be imported for point symbols. If the SVG imported as vector, it can further be symbolized. For example, we can set the official color of the airport and increase its size and apply it on the map. You can now create a cube from data stored in repeated polygons or related tables using the Create Spacetime Cube from Defined Locations tool. The output can then be used with other spacetime pattern mining tools such as the Merging Hotspot Analysis. Results can be visualized with the Visualize Spacetime Cube in 3D tool, which now includes a time series graph. The cube can also be visualized with the Spacetime Cube Explorer, an add-in that automatically sets up time and range sliders. You can now favorite connections to your folders, databases, and server for use in new and existing projects. For example, I can create a new folder connection to my projects folder. If I add it to all new projects, every project I create will have this folder connection. Similarly, I can create a new database connection to my favorites, making it available to any new project. These will then show up in my favorites. I can also create a new server connection, add it to my project, and then to all new projects. And when I create a new project, all three of these connections will now be available. Reviewer rules are validation methods that assess different aspects of a feature's quality. New validation methods let you identify attribute values that do not comply with range or list domains and find duplicate features in your data. In this example, a rule is created to identify duplicate features in the site address points layer by comparing the geometry and optionally the attributes of a feature. The rule is stored in your map and shareable in project templates and packages as well as map and layer files. This map shows the range distances from Montreal for the various versions of the Boeing Dreamliner. In Web Mercator, this is not a very effective map, but with the capabilities of ArcGIS Pro, I can create a map projection that's centered on Montreal. I'll select the azimuthal equidistant and modify the coordinate system to demonstrate distances and show us more of the globe. With the new projection, we can now see how far around the globe we can reach from this single airport. We've added box plots, a new way to visualize distributions for improved data exploration. Use box plots to compare distributions of different values or different categories. We've also improved analysis interpretation by automatically including charts with certain geoprocessing tool outputs, like optimized hotspot analysis. Now you can also customize charts with colors and fonts. You can add your dynamic charts to a layout to present your findings and tell a compelling visual story. To create horizontal annotation, choose the Annotation Layers Feature Template in the Create Features pane. Many annotation features can be created with the same text string. Existing annotation can be modified using the Annotation Tool in the Modify pane. With the Annotation Tool, a single annotation's feature text string can be modified. In addition, an annotation feature can be moved, rotated, or scaled. You now have the ability to select and edit basic 3D geometry shapes. From a multi-patch feature class template, you can now select a number of prefix shapes and configure their parameters such as the X, Y, and Z dimensions, or simply rotate their axis. You can also change their symbology or apply rule packages. These configurations are also possible for a number of supported models such as Collada models, OBJs, and so on. Network datasets like StreetMap Premium have predefined travel modes such as driving an automobile or walking. We want to travel between two locations in Orange County. Note that it takes 19 minutes to travel. In this case, we like to use carpool lanes. 
We can add a new travel mode, such as drive time with carpool, change the restrictions to use express and carpool lanes, and save these settings to a new travel mode. Now we can create a new route analysis layer and use the new travel mode. The new path is slightly longer, but the travel time is only 17 minutes. The Data Interoperability Extension understands web connections and the web as a file system. Here I have a box.com folder full of CSV data I want to geocode. I've authored a workspace that downloads one of the CSV files from Box, geocodes it against ArcGIS Online, converts it to KMZ data, and uploads it back to the same folder. If I go back to the Box folder, I can refresh the page and see the KMZ data. I can then share the data with my colleagues and use it as a native layer in ArcGIS Pro. The new workflow manager functionality is centered on the map view in the new workflow tab, visible if you are licensed and have a workflow connection in your project. Here you can export a map from Pro to the workflow manager database and use its configuration as a map template. Additionally, you can create jobs from any map and select features to use as a location of interest. In this case, we'll create jobs to rerun failed processing sessions for the polygons shown in red. Optionally, you can create one job per feature or merge the features for a single job. With the new Traverse Modify tool, you can pick up work where you left off. You can also correct existing traverses, trace the courses you want to modify, and have them populated inside the Traverse grid. You can now digitize courses as shown in this example. Another new feature is drag and drop for reordering the courses in the grid. You can now reorder a single course or multiple courses. If you make a mistake, just drag and drop the course to the right position in the grid. The Aviation Airport's Toolbox has automated tools for generating obstruction identification surfaces. These tools support both domestic FAA standards and international ICAO formats. Here's an example from the San Diego Airport using tools to evaluate terrain and obstacles around the approach to a runway. When the full physical length of the runway is analyzed, there are terrain conflicts as well as obstacles in the higher ground east of the runway. When the displaced threshold runway length is analyzed instead, the conflicts are resolved. This is the last data set displaying an airborne LiDAR point cloud. If I zoom into an area, you can see there's a bunch of noise in this data set, probably related to atmospheric interference. I like to isolate and eliminate those points. 3D Analyst has a new tool called Classify Last Noise. I have some parameters preset so I can run it quickly. The tool will isolate the noise points and assign the noise classification code to them. Then I can use the last data set filter properties to exclude those points from the display. We've improved raster data management with Mosaic datasets. Now you can edit, import, or create new raster type templates and apply them to rasters while adding them to Mosaic datasets. You can also access Mosaic dataset side tables. You can also view individual Mosaic dataset item functions using the Item Explorer. You can edit multiple Mosaic dataset item functions with the Batch Function Editor. Other new functionality lets you create an orthomapping workspace using an existing Mosaic dataset and georeference a raster by specifying the X or Y coordinates. The documentation has grown quickly to keep pace with the rapid advancement of ArcGIS Pro. In the Get Started section, you'll find updated licensing topics. In the same section, you'll also find new tutorials and videos. The What's New in ArcGIS Pro 2.0 help topic is your gateway to all the great new functionality of this release, and to the hundreds of new and updated help topics that explain how to use it.